my time with Jesus. Fatima Special, Lucia and her faithfulness to the message. Hi, friends. Finished school today? Come in. We're reading the memoirs of Sister Lucia. Sister Lucia was the eldest of the three shepherd children Our Lady appeared to. Right, Christine? That's right. Hi, kids. Hello, Father Luis. We're reading the memoirs of Sister Lucia. Oh, that's great. Father Luis, we know the story of Francisco and Jacinta, but we need to know more about Lucia, who was the oldest of the three shepherd children. Well, you see, Lucia was very faithful to the mission she received from Our Lady to spread devotion to her Immaculate Heart. She had a mission from heaven? Yes, that's right. Wow, like chewing gum man who has the mission of making the world a better place. <laughs> That's not right. Why? What's the problem? Chewing gum man is just a comic book character, and Sister Lucia is real. Okay, okay, I understand. Lucia was very much loved since she was born. She was the youngest of six sisters and one brother. As a baby, everyone wanted to hold her. Dad, let me hold her now. No, it's my turn now. No way. You were holding her before, when she woke up. Okay, I'll let you hold her first, but only for a while, and then you must give her to me. Here, the treasure of the house. The most beautiful in the house, and the smallest. Everyone loved her. When Lucia was five or six years old, she was often in the middle of the fun. This is how she describes it in her memoirs. At dances, they would put me on a chest or other tall object so that I wouldn't be stepped on by the guests. And from there, I had to sing songs to the sound of the guitar or accordion. Lucia has a special gift, doesn't she? Yes, she's very charming and always livens up a party. My sisters taught me to dance. That's the way, Lucia. Move your legs more and twist around. Fantastic. That girl feels no embarrassment. She's so funny. On Sunday afternoons, all of the young people gathered in our yard in the shade of three large fig trees to spend the afternoon playing and talking with my sisters. At Easter, the almond raffle was held there. Moreover, Lucia was very cheerful and was very fond of children and writes this in her memoirs. One of my oldest sisters was a weaver and the other a seamstress. They spent their days at home and the neighbors asked my mother if they could leave their children with me to play in the parents' yard under the supervision of my sisters while they worked in the fields. Of course, love. Leave your little ones here playing with Lucia. They really enjoy themselves. Sure you don't mind? Of course not. My oldest daughters will look after them. Do you want to play a new game? Yeah. I don't know how to play that. Never mind, I'll teach you. At siesta time, my mother taught her children the catechism, especially when Lent was approaching. Okay, kids, it's time to learn the catechism. You know, Lent is coming, and I don't want to be embarrassed when the priest asks you questions. And so she explained the whole catechism to the children. Great! Lucia had a very happy childhood, surrounded by her family and friends. I'll tell you what her first communion was like. Happiest day of her life? Well, yes, but some unpleasant things also happened. You'll see. This is how she describes it in her memoirs. The day the parish priest had set for the children of the parish to take their first Holy Communion was approaching. My mother thought that since I knew church teachings well and was six years old, I could receive my first communion. Carolina, walk with Lucia to church to attend the catechism class. Okay, Mom. First Communion is nearly here, and you need to study the Catechism properly. You know what, Carolina? I'm really looking forward to receiving Jesus for the first time. I felt the same way in my First Communion. It's a very special and beautiful day. I already know all the Catechism. I know, dear. Just wait and see how Father Pena congratulates you and will be very pleased. The parish priest gave his explanation sitting on a chair on a platform. Okay, Luis, come here. I'm going to ask you a question about the catechism. How many people are there in God? Well, I think there's one because, because there's only one God. No, that's not the right answer. Let's see. 
Lucia, I'm sure you know. In God, there are three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's right. You see, Luis? Come on, sit down and learn from Lucia. I knew the whole catechism because my mother had taught us. And so the eve of the big day arrived, and the priest ordered all the children to go to church in the morning to tell them which ones were ready to receive communion. Come on, girls, off to church with you. Today the parish priest will say who's to receive their first communion. Okay, Mom. See you. He's sure to let me receive my first communion. I'm so happy. Yes, because you know the catechism by heart. Imagine my disappointment when the priest called me to his side and, comforting me, told me I had to wait until I was seven. Little Lucia, you'll have to wait until you're seven. But, but, I want to receive Jesus now. Don't cry, little one. Next year you can receive First Communion. What a shame! And she couldn't receive her First Communion? What a pain! Sure is! No, no, you'll see what happened. It turns out that another priest arrived, Father Cruz, who was asked to assist the parish priest to hear confessions and found Lucia crying. Hello, Father Pella. Good morning, Father Cruz. What's the matter with this little one? Well, it turns out she wants to receive First Communion, but she's only six. But I know all the doctrine. Yes, but you're still very young. Well... I'll take her to the other room and ask her some questions. Let's see what she knows. Fine. In that room, on our own, Father Cruz asked me about the catechism and saw that I knew it very well. Father Panna, she knows the Church's teachings and the mystery of the Eucharist better than all these. I know. Her mother taught her. I think she can receive her First Communion. But she's only six. It doesn't matter. I'll take the responsibility if you like. Okay then, go and tell your mother that you will receive your first Holy Communion tomorrow. Yes, thank you, Father Pena. My joy had no limits. I was clapping my hands with joy, running all the way to give the good news to my mother, who immediately began to prepare to take me to confession. Great! Thank goodness. With all the effort it takes me to learn the Catechism, if I had known it as well as Lucia... I would have been sad not to receive First Communion. I hope we will all receive Communion with as much joy as Lucia, because we will be receiving Jesus, who wants to be within us. Wow, it's true, Father Luis. And how can we prepare ourselves to receive Jesus better? Well, I think we can focus especially on some of the words of the Lord's Prayer. When we say, give us this day our daily bread. We pray before taking Communion, don't we? Yes, before Communion at Mass, we say the Lord's Prayer, and we can focus especially on those words. Okay, that's easy enough. You see, in confession, the priest gave Lucia a lot of encouragement. My daughter, your soul is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Keep it always pure so that He can continue His divine action within it. Yes, Father, I will. Kneeling at the feet of Our Lady, Ask her with confidence to take possession of your heart, to prepare it to receive her beloved son worthily tomorrow, and for him to keep it for himself. And Lucia followed his advice throughout her life. She received her first communion very well, and a few years later, reserved her heart for God and Our Lady, becoming a nun and faithfully fulfilling her mission to proclaim devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Our Lady herself gave her that mission in one of her appearances. Will you take us to heaven? Yes, I shall take Jacinta and Francisco soon, but you will stay here some time longer. Jesus wishes to make use of you to make me known and loved. He wants to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. I promise salvation to whoever embraces this devotion. The soul shall be dear to God as flowers placed by me to adorn his throne. Wow! Incredible! <laughs> okay, well, you see, after the apparitions, the three shepherd children decided not to tell anyone anything, but... But someone did, right? Yes, that's what happened. Jacinta told her mother, and soon the news spread throughout the village. See how I knew you were going to say it? There was something inside me that wouldn't let me keep quiet. Well, 
Don't cry now, and from now on, don't tell anyone anything the lady told us. I already did. What did you say? I said that the lady promised to take us to heaven. And you went and said it straight away? I'm sorry. I won't say anything else to anyone. Lucia was faithful to Our Lady's request and managed to keep the secret, but she had to suffer a lot. She had to suffer for keeping the secret? Yes. You see, Sister Lucia describes it in her memoirs. Meanwhile, news of the event had spread. My mother began to get distressed and wanted me to admit that what I'd said was a lie at all costs. Before you go off with the sheep, admit that you lied. But, Mom, I can't say that because it would be a lie. I don't like people believing that Our Lady appeared to you. What a lie. But it's true. Do you want me to get the broom? No, please don't. Well, go out with the sheep now. But think carefully about what I'm saying. This evening, when you get back, you'll tell everyone you lied. But, but... I've never let my children get away with a lie. And I will not tolerate one of this kind. Lucia, what is it? My mother wants me to say that I lied. And how could I say it? You see, you're the one to blame. Why did you do it? Sorry, I did wrong, but I'll never say anything to anyone again. Poor Jacinta, she was really distressed. Yes, but very soon the news spread throughout the region, and the civil authorities wanted to know what Our Lady had told the children. Did they want the children to tell them the secret? Well, it wasn't really a secret. It's just that the children had decided not to talk to anyone about the apparitions, so they were brought before the civil authorities of Oren. How scary! Yes, Lucia's father and the father, Francisco and Jacinta, received a letter from the authorities telling them to take their children to court for questioning. I got this letter from my daughter, Lucia, to go to Aurum tomorrow to speak with the authorities. I got the letter too, but my Francisco and Jacinta will not go. I don't have to take two kids who aren't responsible for their actions to court. Besides, they wouldn't be able to walk all the way to Aurum. I'm taking Luthea. She can sort it out with them. I don't understand anything about these things. They then took the opportunity to give us a good scare. Tomorrow, when you go to Orem, you can tell them all that this is a big lie. A big fat lie. If you don't, just wait and see what punishment you'll get. Can they put me in jail? Yes. No, not that. The next day, when we passed my uncle's house, my father waited a moment for him. I ran to Jacinta's bed to say goodbye. Goodbye, Jacinta. I don't know if we'll see each other again. They might kill me or put me in jail forever. If they kill you, tell them that Francisco and I are also like you and we want to die with you. And now I'm going to the well with Francisco to pray hard for you. Wow. And did they kill her? How could they have killed her? I don't know. Can't you see she wrote her memoirs when she was grown up? Wow, that's right. <laughs> yes, well, but she had a tough time. Her cousins, Francisco and Jacinta, went to Lucia's well to pray for her, and they stayed there all day until it got dark. Hi. You're here? Your sister came to fetch water and told us that you have been killed. We've prayed and cried for you. Well, as you see, I'm not dead. Great! We were expecting the worst! Lucia never said anything, despite the pressures. She was faithful to the will of Our Lady to keep what she said in her appearance a secret. Know what, Father Luis? I also had to be faithful to my friend Anna when Sonia stole her diary. Anna had her diary stolen? And what did it say? I don't know. I didn't read it. You didn't read it? But hey, weren't you curious? It's just not right, that's all. What does it matter? Well, it matters a lot. Hello, Eva. Hello, Sonia. Guess what I've got in my hand? Well, it looks like a book to me. It's Anna's diary. Really? Hey, but that's really bad. Did you steal it from her? I borrowed it. Look, she talks about us here. Want to read it? We shouldn't read it. Oh, come on. Look, she talks about you. Aren't you curious? Well, of course I'm curious. Well, go on then. Read what she writes about you. You'll see. What a laugh. No, Sonia. I'm going to close it and give it back to her. Aren't you going to read it? I've already read it, Anne. <laughs> I said no. And you shouldn't have read it either. 
Very good, Ava. You did the right thing. Yeah, I think so. Of course, Enrique! A diary is a very personal thing, and it is very wrong to steal it and read it. Very good. That shows you're a good friend. Father Luis, did the three shepherd children go to prison? Yes, they did. They were locked up with the prisoners. How scary. And what did the prisoners say to them? All you have to do is tell that secret to the director. What do you care if the lady doesn't want you to? Never. I'd rather die. Do you want to pray the rosary with us? I don't know how to pray the rosary. It doesn't matter. Do whatever you can. Please, sir, can you hang this medal of Our Lady on the wall? Thank you, sir. Now let's pray the rosary. And the prisoners prayed the rosary with the shepherd children. And the ones who didn't know how to pray? Yeah, what did the ones who didn't know how to pray do? They remained silent as a sign of respect to the others. Wow, the shepherd children really were brave. I'd like to be as brave as them when I go to church with my friends. Do you want to pray the rosary? I don't know how to pray it properly. Me neither. It doesn't matter. I'll show you. Very good, Ava. That's what we learned from the shepherd children of Fatima. You see, sometime later, Lucia's family went through a bad time. What happened to them? They didn't have much money. Lucia's family was going through very hard times. This is how Sister Lucia describes it in her memoirs. My poor mother was immersed in a deep bitterness, and when she, my brother, and I were together at home at night, waiting for my father for dinner, my mother, seeing the empty places of her other daughters who had married, said with great sadness, Oh, Lord, where did all the joy of this home go? Then she remembered the words of the angel, Above all, accept and bear with submission the suffering which the Lord will send you. I then retreated to the well so as not to increase my mother's suffering with my own. There on my knees, face down on the slabs that covered it, I mingled my tears with its waters and offered my sufferings to God. My mother and sisters kept up their attitude of contempt, which really affected me a lot and hurt as much as the insults. Then June 13th arrived and we went to Cava de Iria, as Our Lady had told us. All those people followed us, asking us a thousand questions. On that day I felt very bitter. I saw I saw my distressed mother, who wanted at all costs to make me, as she said, confess my lie. I always managed to get my children to tell the truth. And now, I have to let my youngest get away with something like this? If it were just a little thing. But a lie like this to fool so many people. This is absolutely up to you. Either you tell the truth to these people and admit that you lied, or I'll lock you up in a room where you won't see the light of day. With all these troubles, the last thing I need is something like this. My sisters took sides with my mother, and I was surrounded by an atmosphere of scorn and contempt. Either you admit that you lied, or we will all punish you. We are sick and tired of so many lies. What you're doing is very serious, Lucia. I remembered the old days and I asked myself, where's all the love and affection my family used to show me until recently? and my only relief were the tears I shed before God, offering him my sacrifice. Poor Lucia, she must have felt terrible. Yeah, she went from being the spoiled child to being the scolded child. Well, yes, it was very hard for her, but Our Lady comforted her. On that day then, Our Lady, as if guessing what was wrong with me, in addition to what I already recounted, said to me, And do you suffer a lot? Do not be discouraged. I will never abandon you. My Immaculate Heart will be your refuge and the way that will lead you to God. Phew, it's great that Our Lady comforted her. Poor Lucia. Jacinta also comforted her. Lucia, don't cry. These must be the sacrifices that the angel told us God would send us. Therefore, your sufferings are to convert sinners to Him and atone for their sins. Another day, the parish priest summoned Lucia, Francisco, and Jacinta to question them. Lucia's sisters tried to scare her into telling him the truth, but Lucia, Francisco, and Jacinta said nothing. So are you going to talk to the parish priest? Yes? 
Well, you can tell him that this is all a big lie and that you're sorry about lying to the whole village. We can't say that. Oh, no? Well, Mom and I are going to punish you, and you'll soon learn the lesson that way. We'll make you confess by hook or by crook. My poor mother became more and more distressed when she saw the large number of people approaching from all directions. These poor people are coming deceived by the children's lies, and I really don't know what to do to make them see the truth. <laughs> These three little liars have managed to fool the whole village. Poor people. They believe everything three little children say. It's so distressing that all these people have been deceived into coming to Coba de Edia. What do you, Maria Rosa, think about the visions of your daughter? I don't know. I think she's no more than a liar who's deceived half the world into coming. Don't say that too loud, because someone might be capable of killing her. I think there's someone out there who doesn't hold her in great esteem. Did they really want to kill them? Some people did. Wow, they had to be very strong and brave. Well, yes, the three shepherd children managed to keep the secret of the apparitions, despite the threats. But they also managed to be strong thanks to spiritual direction. In September 1917, Lucia spoke with her first spiritual guide, Father Formigal. This is how she describes it. I really liked him because he spoke to me a lot about living the virtues, teaching me some ways to practice them. He showed me a picture of St. Agnes, told me about her martyrdom, and encouraged me to emulate her. His reverence continued going there every month to question me, after which he always gave me good advice which did me some spiritual good. One day, he told me, Your duty is to love our Lord very much for all the graces and benefits he's granting you. This phrase became so deeply engraved in my soul that after that I acquired the habit of constantly saying to our Lord, My God, I love you in gratitude for the graces you have granted me. Well, you know what, Father Luis? I want to have spiritual direction, like Lucia. That's a great idea. Yes, Joseph. I already have spiritual direction with Father Luis, who is our parish priest. Okay, but how is spiritual direction done? Well, it involves talking to a priest frequently and telling him what worries us so that he can help us in our spiritual life. Well, I think I can do that. Father Louise, and what did Lucia do after the apparitions? Well, shortly after the apparitions, Francisco and Jacinta died. Right! We read it in the memoirs of Sister Lucia. Well, later, when Lucia was 14, she started attending the school of the Dorothea sisters in the town of Vilar near Porto, and a few years later became a nun. And was she a nun all her life? Yes, that's what happened. And did she never leave the convent? Well, she sometimes left the convent, but not very often. Didn't Our Lady ever appear to her again? Well, yes. Our Lady appeared to ask her to spread devotion to her Immaculate Heart throughout the world. You'll see. One day, while praying in the chapel of the convent of Pontevedra in 1925, Our Lady appeared to her with the child Jesus. Have compassion on the heart of your most holy mother. Covered with thorns with which ungrateful men pierce it at every moment, and there is no one to make an act of reparation to remove them. Look, my daughter, at my heart, surrounded with thorns with which ungrateful men pierce me at every moment by their blasphemies and ingratitude. You at least try to console me and announce in my name that I promise to assist at the moment of death with all the graces necessary for salvation. All those who, on the first Saturday of five consecutive months, shall receive the sacrament of confession, receive Holy Communion, recite five decades of the Rosary, and keep me company for 15 minutes while meditating on the 15 mysteries of the Rosary with the intention of making reparation to my Immaculate Heart. And that was the message that Our Lady gave Sister Lucia and that she conveyed to the world. That's how the devotion of the first Saturdays of the month began. It's a very beautiful devotion that we can also do. That's right, Christine. That's a great idea. Father Luis, and how did Sister Lucia die? Well, she died in 2005 at the age of 97, and her body is buried in the Basilica at the Sanctuary of Fatima together with her cousins Francisco and Jacinta because she'd always been very close to them, hadn't she? Yes, and what can we learn from Lucia? We can learn to be faithful to God. Yes, be faithful to the mission God has given us. Wait a moment. Do we also have a mission? Of course. From God? 
That's right. Wow, how amazing. And what is our mission? Well, we must be holy, which means loving God and others deeply. That's what we learned from Lucia, right? That's right. We learn to be faithful to what God wants of us. All right, friends. We've come to the end of the program and have to say goodbye. Exactly. See you next time. Bye-bye. See you soon.